Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. On today's show, does LeBron deserve blame for the Cavs falling to the Celtics in Game 5? Plus, Grammy-nominated rapper Designer joins the show to talk about his new album, LeBron, The Warriors, and more. And is Ezekiel Elliott primed for a monster year with the Cowboys? Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. The Cavs are facing elimination after losing in Boston last night. LeBron had 26-10, and 10, but the rest of the Cavs starters struggled. He also turned it over six times and looked tired during the game. LeBron and Ty Lue both talked about that afterwards. Let's take a listen. Did LeBron look tired to you? And especially, you know, did you think he looked tired at all tonight? He looked a little tired to me, yes. No concerns. <laughs> you got to be ready to play now. No concerns. I have my moments. Um, but I think everybody at this point is tired um, or, you know, worn down or whatever the case may be. I'm fine. And I didn't mention the fatigue either. Well, One of you guys did. I'm fine. We're joined by Rob Parker. Welcome, Rob. Good morning. Good morning. First, Good morning. I'd like to say, Joy, you look so beautiful what? today. Thanks, you, Rob. What about yeah. being Rob? What about oh, being Skip? Yeah. You guys look okay. Yeah. Joy looks abs. You look absolutely beautiful. Thanks, well, not that you don't most days, but today. Whatever. You Stop trying to butter people. I'm not trying to butter her up. I'm gonna interrupt him, Skip. <laughs> Rob, how much do you blame LeBron for the loss? Uh, I blame LeBron 100% for the loss. For real? Yeah, mm. for real. And, and, and you know what, Shannon? You, I, I know you're going to bring up that the supporting cast and only Kevin Love had uh, over double digits, and I, I get all that. Okay. Okay? But LeBron knew all that, too, coming in, Skip. And I've seen LeBron deliver big game fives on the road when it all mattered. I was sitting courtside in 2007 in Detroit when he scored 48 points and Chris Webber gave the Pistons a three-point lead on a three-point play and LeBron hit a, a bank to three from Lansing, Michigan, mm -hmm. right? I saw him. I've seen him. He's averaged 32 points in game fives when the series is 2-2 and his team needs a win. Mm -hmm. This was subpar. This, this, this game was not what they needed in this situation. That's what I'm saying. 28-10, mm -hmm. six turnovers. He's out. He's fatigued. He looks like he's uh, 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 uninterested. I don't know. Like, yeah. like he stepped away from it at different points during the game. That is true. Because maybe he realized we can't win. Do you know what I mean? And that's what it looked like to me. All I'm saying is I expect great things from a great player. I've always said he's a great player, just not the greatest in my eyes. LeBron James was not ready for the task. This team is 9-0. They just beat him both times in Cleveland. He knew he had to be superhuman and put on a, a, an effort for the ages if they're going to get there, and he didn't deliver. Okay, let me he ask. did not deliver. Okay, in game two, he had 40. I don't care about hold those on, hold games. 40, 10, and 12. Was that an epic performance? And they lost, right? So I just want you to tell me right this. So how much blame does uh, JR for two points? What, 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 it's what are you terrible. Doing? You oh, know whoa, that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. What about uh, uh, Tristan? That one point. What are we gonna do with that? Twenty, uh, twenty-five minutes, twenty-six minutes, and thirty minutes. Three starters. They give you ten points. So what I'm gonna do with that? But anyway, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say hundred percent. I gave him ninety. I'm gonna give him ninety percent because, like I said, when he's on the court, I see Cavs in the front. I see James in the back. He's a pantheon great player. I believe he's the goat. And so when I, anytime I see a great performer. Don't give me no off note. If I were to hear Pavarotti, rest his soul, I want him to give me that virtuoso. So I expect LeBron James to give me virtuoso performances. Every time I see it, I know, some Skip, mm -hmm. that might be unrealistic. But mm -hmm. when you're that player, that's the level of expectation. Mm -hmm. And I expect over the next two games, he will not let us down. And Bron, I trust. But even if he gives you a 50-point triple-double, he's going to need some of these role players to give you more than one but point, Shannon, more than two points. I agree with that, but here is, if he gave the Cavaliers last night 50, whatever you want to put up, 48, whatever, and they lost or whatever, I would be more comfortable with that and saying he did everything that he could do. I don't believe last night he did everything that he could do. 28 points and six turnovers is not good enough in a big game where a team mm -hmm. hadn't lost all postseason on the road. It's just not good enough. And by the way, Allow me to state, having sat across from this man all these months here on Undisputed, 
that for this man, LaShannon Sharp, to give LeBron James 90% of the blame is the equivalent of 100% of the blame <laughs> because he caps his criticism of LeBron at 90. That's, you just couldn't emotionally go over the edge into 91. I almost passed out what? when you said 90. 90? Because I got to give uh, that other 10% to okay. the other 10 guys that played. Yeah, but Shannon, Nine guys. I got to ask you. Yes. What, what are you going to do with the fact that the Boston Celtics shot 36.5% from the field? 365 mm-hmm. That's the worst in their whole playoff run this year. So you can throw all those non-LeBron, non-help, uh, sh- you know, stink up shots, mm-hmm. you know, like all those O for whatevers. Mm-hmm. But Boston didn't play very well. Boston didn't shoot very well. They Boston did, was 2 for did, 12 from 3 in the they, fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, that game was there it's for the right taking. Here, it right. was King right here. there. They yeah. missed shot after shot, yeah. they and they couldn't. They didn't play well after the first quarter because if you look at Boston in the first quarter, they go 6 for 6 from the line. Yep. They're 6 for 13 from the 3, and yep. they make three more field goals, My, and they only had one turnover. The, the Cavs have five turnovers, and they didn't. They have three or six from the three-point line, and they're two for three from the free-throw line. Skip, don't you seem concerned? I told you. I'm. I'm not concerned. I'm just mystified because it wasn't just subpar LeBron last night. It was bizarre LeBron last night because from the tip-off. He was lethargic and lackadaisical and seemed not to care that much about a game five when I thought they had assumed psychologically uh, psychological control of the Boston Celtics. Do you, do you remember the ball, other Boston series when they played, uh, uh, what was that, 2010 with LeBron? Yeah, and the they last, said, last go round. Right, and the same thing, too. people felt like LeBron. Remember, there was a whole thing that he quit. Okay. That he just well, the, the owner accused him, Don, Dan Gilbert accused him after a series of quitting. And then somebody from LeBron's camp quietly planted among several key members of the media that LeBron had to be sedated before games four, five, and six of that Boston series because he was having an personal issue in the locker room with Delonte West. Remember all that? That was the story that came yeah, That was right. the story, and it got reported on ESPN because I was there. You, you was do the realize point. in game six, LeBron had 27, 19, and 11. In that, against Boston. Against Boston. Okay. And he all quit. Right. Wow. But that just goes... But that just tells you how great he is. Oh, oh, but he's great now. I've always said he's great, Skip. Have I ever said he wasn't yeah. great? yeah. Joy, but have I ever just, said he wasn't great? Just, I've it, never said it that. Just, it just goes never. to show you that a guy can shoot 50% from the field, has 26, 10, and 5, and he say, man, that's a, ooh, that was some book. But that's just what we come to expect. But I'm going to tell you this, and you better mar- write this down. Bet if, it. If, Whatever comes out your mouth, bet it. I picked them in six, okay? Obviously, they can't win in six now. But I'll tell you this. If he loses to the starless Celtics team, this will be a black mark on his legacy. Kind of like, kinda like okay? the Lakers losing to the starless Pistons? No, that so Pistons did, did, did he take? No, that... Hold on, wait a minute. You know what? It, Chauncey Billups is a star. Yes. Rip Hamilton was a star. Chauncey Billups was a top pick in the NBA draft. Come on. Rasheed Wallace Rasheed is a bum? Wallace? Hold Stop on. it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jason Tatum was third. No, Jalen did, Brown did. was third. Al Horford is third. You're going to tell Marcus me. Marcus Smart is fifth. Ben Wallace was a four-time defensive player of the year and, in and the NBA. Janet, they were Stop established it. stars. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, don't, don't. Which, put, one, of, which one of those guys in Springfield? Because I need to go. I'm trying to go see him. Which one is Springfield? What are you talking about? Which one of those guys are in Springfield, Massachusetts? None well, right well, now. Well, how many of those guys made multiple all-star teams? Like all of them? Let me ask you a question. You don't yes. think, let me yeah. ask you a question. You don't think Jason Tatum's going to make an all-star team? Sure he will. Okay. Has in he time, arrived? But, what, but what they about, haven't arrived like that Pistons what, what team. About, Stop what about disrespecting that team. What about Al Horford? He a bum, huh? He's not a bum. He's you, a good you know, player. Before this series, you were pretty much talking about him like he was a bum. He was. <laughs> and, I, and what did I say? Yeah. Al Hor- in these playoffs, I said yeah. Al Horford is playing better than I've ever seen him play. As an Atlanta Hawk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, was him. But don't worry, mm-hmm. look at it, don't worry about it. And Braun, I trust. So whatever you want to bet, you want something on the series? I, a, I picked them. I, I still believe pick. I picked them. I'm sticking with the Cavs to win the series. I picked tomatoes. That don't got nothing to do with this here. <laughs> bet something. Boston is going to lose in Cleveland, and then it'll be a crapshoot in the game seven. And just like the they point. just beat Indiana in seven games, this is what it'll take. 50-point game seven. Book it. I'll bet you that. that he, go, I'll bet I'm you that he don't get 50. I'm going to drop it in Let's bet that. Mm-hmm. I'll bet you he won't get 50 in game seven. What are you giving your money away for? What? 50 points. I want to bet for the New Jordans. What can we bet? You I call a blind I called. witness. No. Huh? Didn't I tell you you have 90 points between the two you games? Yeah. You better check out those Clark, Clark, Clark Kent glasses, man. I see. I, 
Can you see? Yeah, I see. Mm. I see you still hating on Braun, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, Shannon, I yes. need you to assure me because I picked the Cavaliers in five, and I will not I be at all six. surprised. I got it. I won't be at all surprised if LeBron does have epic performances against the Boston Celtics in game six and game seven. Yes. But can he sleep this off? What would, d does he have more vibranium at home? Yeah. I don't get it. No, seriously. Yeah. Because that guy I saw that last I night teach. sitting on the scores table at the he end of the game gulping water. That, like, that wasn't come water. On, come on. That wasn't water. Well, well, you he was out of it. Running I, out of gas where you're pulling yourself out of the game in the first quarter and the second quarter? It just can't happen in game six and game seven. It won't happen in game six, but game seven, I don't know. Bitty, book it. Well, remember what happened in game seven against Indiana? Yeah. LeBron just checked 45, out of the game. What do you have, Joey? 45, out of the game, walked to the locker room. 45, 12, and six. And during that time, they were only up one, and Kevin Love shot them all the way up to up uh, 12. Only way to man, go, Kevin. Only man in NBA history with multiple 45-point game sevens. Mm. Only man. Well. Only. Yeah, because some guys who were great, the greatest of all time, never played game seven. He didn't need it's game seven. It's just that simple. Hold on, I could have well, it's funny. Hold on, he could, never hold on. had to play game seven. I could have swore Michael Jordan played a game seven against Indy. Hmm. He I could have swore. I was there at courtside. What about the, the Knicks? He was really good at huh? game, too. Lo and behold, he played and, against them. And because, the NBA Finals? guess what? The East used to be the beast. It used to be the you, tougher see, conference. Y'all you, 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 try to interject physicality oh. with tough. Mm. Stop it. Mm. The Knicks had one Hall of Famer. The Pacers had two Hall of Famers. Well, okay? I, I, everybody gets in the Basketball Hall of Fame. Right. No, 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 what, thank you. That I ain't mean, that. Chris Mullen, Mark Jackson is Mark That's Jackson? That's two. Okay. No, no. Uh, Reggie, Reggie Miller. Reggie Miller. And, uh, Reggie Miller and Chris Mullen mm -hmm. are in the Hall of Fame. What What other Rick Nick? Rick Smith, he's that, in something. Right? No, he, no. He in Switzerland, <laughs> wherever he's from. <laughs> he's in the Marist Hall let, of Fame. Let me ask you a question, Skip. How, are those great Knicks teams, how many of those Patrick Ewan teams are the players in the Hall of Fame? What about that Miami Heat team led by Zoe? How many of those guys? Two, him and Hardaway. Well, that's pretty good. That okay, two Hall of Fame. An expansion okay. team? Okay, what about what about what Braun faced? The Celtics, how many of those guys are going to be in the Hall of Fame? Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen. You think they'll be in the Hall of Fame? I'm just going out on a little. I mean, what you think? They, they... Ray Allen also played with LeBron. But he played with them. He beat them. But you also. But, but wait you... a second. Those Celtics played in wheelchairs. Exactly. They? Oh, nah, they <laughs> played in wheelchairs. They played in wheelchairs. Nah, they played. They yeah, did. Paul, Paul Pierce, Paul Pierce, he leaves in a wheelchair, <laughs> and now he come back out there like Willis Reed. For real? How you leave in a wheelchair? They normally, if you leave in an ambulance, you can't right. come back in the game. I've never seen anybody leave in a wheelchair and come back and play. Yeah. Ever. I haven't either. Yeah. Yeah, y'all need to You be couldn't shamed. have been hurt that bad if you get in a wheelchair. This is blasphemous what y'all doing to LeBron. Mm. I will not let y'all You know what? They should get LeBron a wheelchair for game seven. Is he that needs it? one. Okay. <laughs> Just to make a statement. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. I, you laughing at everybody. I don't laugh. Kiki Ki and Joy <laughs> up here being petty as ever. A robber. <laughs> <laughs> what? It'll skip, it'll skip. Everybody picked the Cavs to win. Yeah, there we go. We all I'm going on the low. I'm going on the low. No, you're not. I'm going on the low. You're only I'm bad, you're only my bad pick. because we all agree with you. So yes. you're trying to find a I'm way to, to poke holes in it. Don't worry about skip it. Skip said five games. Every, he has so much confidence. Uh, everyone at the table thinks the Cavs are going to win this series. I got a feeling. <laughs> I got a sneaky suspicion. That old mask coming out again. Oh, oh really? The goat mask. Because mm -hmm. last night he was just the lowercase go to the and game. And the jersey. Go to the game. And the time. jersey. Yeah. And I'm going to have my gold chain on like Mike had his on back in the day. <laughs> you remember when he first came to Lee, he had that big old gold so chain? So assure me, LaShannon, yeah. in Latire, you trust, right? Yes. Latire, and Braun, and Braun, I trust. Yeah. Okay. And Braun, I trust. Yeah. Look, you got any money on you? Yeah. Did you see that, that eye looking? That's old Braun. That's, uh, that's old Braun. Rob, thanks for joining us. No mercy. Hey guys, it's Joy Taylor. Before the show moves along, I wanted to talk to you about Buffalo Wild Wings. This time of year brings us two things, graduations and Father's Day, and the gifts that go along with them. Before you buy Dad another tie or that grad a balloon that will probably float away, ask yourself this. Does my dad or grad like wings or sports or better yet, both? If the answer is yes, then get them a Buffalo Wild Wings gift card. Right now, if you purchase $30 worth or more in-store or online, they'll give you a $5 bonus to keep for yourself. That's a gift that gives back. How generous of you. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports. Terms and conditions apply. Now back to the show. No mercy. The Celtics beat LeBron and the Cavs in game five last night to take a 3-2 series lead. Jason Tatum led the way with 24 points for Boston, and they're now a perfect 10-0 at home in the playoffs. LeBron had 26-10 and 10 in the loss, but turned the ball over six times, and he looked tired throughout the game. Game six is tomorrow night in Cleveland. 
We're joined by FS1 NBA analyst Jim Jackson. Welcome, Jim. Good morning. What's up, What's up fellas? Mm. Yeah. Nice shirt, man. Appreciate that. You trying to butter me up? For huh? what? Huh? You didn't want to bet me last time, uh, I so I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have won that bet? I don't know. Oh, it I wasn't a bet, so I don't. Oh, I, I oh you didn't get back. I don't yeah. want it. Yeah. How yeah, much trouble are the Cavs in, Jim? Well, they've been in trouble. I mean, mm. that's. But I guess the issue is, I think, is two things for me. One, I'm excited th the fact mm. that this is a competitive series. For the last couple of years, even with Golden State, there's always been okay. Or are they going to sweep a series? Can we get any mm -hmm. kind of entry? Well, we got it right now. Right. You know, with, with the Celtics. Um, you know, the thing with the Cavs is that at this point of the season, they are who they are. Yeah. When they're at home, three-point shooting is prevalent. Turnovers are down. They're a much better team when they're on the road. Like uh, last night, 15 turnovers. And these were costly turnovers. Yeah. I mean, just unforced. The pressure of the Celtics, I believe, you know, had a lot to do with it. But the inability for the complimentary players at time to feel comfortable on the court. Mm -hmm. I think when they feel they got to make a play, mm -hmm. they feel pressured. So now, Shannon, it's like, okay, I want to make this pass, but I don't want to turn it over. Right. And then you end up turning it over. And I think on the other end of it, what LeBron's turnover is, because he has to make so many plays, he's trying to get guys involved. Mm -hmm. Like the pass to Kevin Love right. on the fast break. Yeah. He should have just took that to the basket. Exactly. But yet and still, he's trying to get, get him involved. involved, and now he's turning the ball over. So it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic. And give Brad Stevens, I think, a lot of credit by how he manipulated the lineup, brought Indeed. Morris off the bench. Okay, now you kind of change a little bit uh, what you do defensively. Baines inside, I thought, did an excellent job of, you know, just hustling, rebounding. Challenging shots. Challenging shots. But it also took a lot of pressure off Morris to feel like he had to come out and guard LeBron early on mm -hmm. and picking up some cheap fouls. Right. So they're in trouble. Can they win at home? Of course. But ultimately, do you trust the supporting cast in the game seven at Boston is the question. And do you trust the young guys in Boston who haven't been there to ultimately win a seven game? If I'm Boston, I want to win right now on the road and get it over with. But you don't trust that they will. Who, Boston? Yeah. No, not yet. Okay. Um, I think it'll go to game seven. And? And I want to put my trust. I do. I really want to put my trust in LeBron James yeah. in, a, in a game seven. I really do. Sure. Just because he's been there and done that. He has. You know? And I think a, lot, a telltale sign would be how they play, I think, defensively and what adjustments they make at home to me. But I, I got to trust King James in game seven. Mm. LeBron, I trust. I ain't worried. I ain't worried. <laughs> As in, in God, you trust him. I don't know. I don't know. I said it broad, I trust. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, okay. it's like L.A. You live in L.A., the weather's going to be great. You're going to get somewhere between 72 and 82 every, at least 300 days a year. Hmm. Sometimes a little warmer, sometimes a little cooler. But it's going to be sunny out. <laughs> My boys love it. Tonka had his head out the window yesterday like, Dad, I ain't <laughs> never going back there. I said, I, I got you, bro. I got you. I know yeah. the Look, feeling. The, George Hill, he averages 13 points a game in the wins. He averaged five points a game in the losses. Mm. JR, he averages 10 in the wins. He averaged two points in the losses. Mm. Two. Two points a game, that's what he got. So what am I supposed to do with that, Skip? Mm. What am I supposed to do with that? And you keep telling me, oh, he has help. You telling me LeBron doesn't have any help? Yep, I'm telling you that. That's help? Well, if, if, if that's his help, don't mm. give him no more. Mm. <laughs> don't give him no more. If that's his help right there, he don't need no help like that. He needs, some more, he needs some more kind of help. Because, Skip, you and I both know the likelihood of LeBron being able – you can't have one player outscoring all the rest of your starters. You're not going to win a game like that. Hmm. But I tell you what, I done told you, you keep picking to your head hard, Skip. You mm -hmm. stubborn. If I didn't know better, I swear you was born – were you born in April? No. Because you, you remind me of a Taurus. Mm -hmm. Your head hard. December. Well, you got some Taurus mm -hmm. tendencies in you because no, your don't. head hard. You keep betting against Bron. Mm -hmm. I keep. I've been told him. I told him Bron gonna have these next two games. Mm -hmm. His stat line gonna be something like 90, Joy, 17, and 20. Have I been betting against? I've been betting yeah. for him. No. And he's been letting me down again and down again, again and again. He'll let you down. And by the way, speaking of help, you know, poor Jason Tatum needs some more help. That's who needs help. <laughs> oh come on. Look, look at the look <laughs> poor, poor Jason yeah, Tatum. Come on. Well, look come what on. happened to the starting what? backcourt of the Boston Celtics last night. One, Jalen Brown shot four for fifteen, and Terry Rozier three. For 15, mm -hmm. but two for Smart, eight, and one for but seven. But Marcus Smart played more minutes than both of them, mm -hmm. so he look what he mm -hmm. got. 
I don't know, but that's 23 missed shots between the two starting guards for the Boston Celtics. Your starting guards missed a total of nine shots. I that's think I'd take nine over 23. That's because right? they only took 11. Oh, that, that's okay. the only reason. Right. If they'd have took more, they'd have missed more. So the Boston Celtics last night shot the worst they've shot mm. in these whole playoffs, 36.5%. And in fact, it was the third worst shooting performance of any Celtics playoff game over the last 35 years. That's how poorly they shot the ball. And in the fourth quarter, they shot 31 point, what is it? Eight, so 30, let's give them 32% in the fourth mm -hmm. quarter. They were two for 12 from three in the fourth quarter. And I'm just, I'm beating on my desk at home saying, you, you, King, it's open. They're just saying, here, silver platter, take this game, King. Because they don't have Kyrie, they don't have a closer. And once again, he ran out of gas. And I asked this former professional athlete who's in the Hall of Fame across from me to please explain this to me. So I'm going to ask this former okay. professional athlete who played 14 years in the NBA and played through the back half of the Michael Jordan era in Chicago, all the way up through 1998 in Chicago, when at age 34, a year older than LeBron, Michael Jordan made first team all defense that year. And in game six, after a grueling seven game series against the Indiana Pacers in the conference finals, remember that, Reggie and company? Game six at Utah versus Carl Malone and John Stockton. Michael played 44 minutes and scored 45 points and, and had four steals. He just took over on both ends of the floor. And, Jim, not once in all my time covering Michael Jeffrey Jordan in Chicago did I ever hear about he's tired. He just didn't get Talk tired. Talk to him, Jack. Talk he's to him, never, Jack. Never Tell him what's going on, Jack. Yeah. Talk to him. Well, well, the difference, but you can't compare the two, Sip, because the pace of play is different. The errors are different. What he was asked to do is totally different than what the Cavs are asking LeBron to do. you got to keep, keep in mind, this is the culmination of all years, not just the playoff, because LeBron has been asked to carry this team the whole time. So at some point, at some point, you if you burn that engine, mm -hmm. the engine go knock back. Mm -hmm. it, sometimes it's going to stutter a little bit. That doesn't mean it's going to give out, but it's going to give you some issues. And that's what we see with LeBron here because I think it's the mental fatigue, too, as well. You now, can see, that I would buy. Yeah, you, you can I'll see, it, you can see it in his passes and mm -hmm. yeah. what he's trying to do because a lot of times – he was trying to get it to his guys, and he didn't have that zip on it. And then he gets well, upset. Now, just flat out now I'm, I'm going to say this, though. But with that comes a responsibility, because LeBron at times, Chan, you got to understand this, too, puts his team in tough defensive situations. Yeah. Because when he turns it over, he laments in the half court. Or and he now, complains. And mm -hmm. on the other end, now it's a 3-on-2 or 5-on-4, yep. mm -hmm. whatever it is. Yeah. So... Part of that is his issue, yes, too. Yes, You know I what I mean? I totally agree. No question about now, it. Now, now, but, but Skip, too. And I, I looked at this. We were watching the game. We had our cigars watching the game last yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm calling your boy over. No, no, I ain't calling my boy because I ain't want, you know, to smoke. You, yeah, you know, I want to be evil. I had to clean in my backyard. You too clean for that. <laughs> it, it, that's what he on. Uh, them heebles. Yeah, the cohebas. That's what it is. Cigars. So, but what I, I was looking at the shooting percentage. Yeah. And, and all the times you could be skewed a little bit because they were able, Boston, where we get to the free throw line, 21 for 23. Yeah. They made four more three-pointers. Mm -hmm. But also, they were able to convert those 15 turnovers into 15 points. So you make up for a lack of two-point shooting right. by getting to the free-throw line and converting, but then also being able to turn those turnovers into points. And that's what the good teams do. They figure out ways to win games when actually the shooting percentage doesn't look that good. And But here's the thing. 31 is a lot better than zero because when you turn it over, you don't even get a chance to put the ball up in, mm -hmm. in your own end. But to go back to his Michael Jordan, did he tell you Michael Jordan took 39 shots to get those 45 points? Mm -mm. But we'll talk about that later. Okay, but wait a second. That, that requires even more energy. That's where Scottie Pippen was sick that night in game six, and he scored eight total points in that game. It's like Jordan or bust against two Hall of Famers on the other side, and he just said, I got this. And he steals the ball from Carl Malone at the end of the game and Bicycle dribbles it up. Team. It was not. He went completely <laughs> snaked Didn't, him. Wasn't Rodman, wasn't Rodman playing? Uh, uh, yeah, he was, he was, on, the, he was on the high side. Thank he was you. on the yeah. high side. Of Michael goes completely behind him and snakes him, steals the ball, dribbles it up the floor. Scotty's over on the wing saying, I'm open. And Michael 
goes, no, I got this. A little push off because that's the way basketball was played in that era. And he goes right up from the free throw line and he holds the pose. And it's just push off. It's a one point last deficit. Too many, last too many reports said yeah. it was a push off. Okay. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah. This is what we know, okay. Skip Bayless. The Celtics score 14 fewer points on the road than they do at home. So we're going back to the Boston it's the Garden. Boston Celtics. They don't have Kyrie. They don't have Gordon Hayward. They've been playing They're so not, long without but, Kyrie but and Hayward. It's the, key, it's the Cleveland Cavs that don't have a second playmaker. It, yeah. Yes. In, in, an, in an ideal world, when Kevin Love was Kevin Love, you can put him on the post and mid post, and he can make plays. Yeah, he's an excellent passer. Yeah, out of those, but, but behind the three point line, you, he's not a playmaker. So who else do you have? So yeah, the, the you, Celtics you, are young, but look at the Cavs. Okay, but and, you got the wait a second. What? You got the best player on okay. the planet, or so you tell me. He one, is. Right? One, one player can't beat a team. That's why uh, uh, the big three Celtics kept putting that hammer on Jordan mm-hmm. here. Because mm-hmm. it was one player against the team. Right. So they kept bashing him. Yeah, but don't wait, work. when Larry Bird called Michael Jordan, uh, uh, what, what, he, he called him God. Disguised uh-huh. as Jesus. Yeah, right? Yeah. You know, as but, God. But, yeah. but Jesus ain't winning that game yeah. either. Yeah. Oh, that's here. But that's how, that's how they do it. Look at, look at all the praise they heaped on Tom Brady. Oh, he's unbelievable. At 40 years of age, he threw for 500 yards as they took that Lombardi trophy from he's Commissioner Goodell. He's won five Super Bowls. Five. And he should have won seven. You're making it feel like LeBron ain't yeah. won nothing. I I got it. He's three and five in the finals. Yeah, uh, here's, here's the thing. Let me let me. Oh, man, you know what? I, 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 I'm a, you know I'm gonna I'm put it in terms that I I, I view it. A lot of I, my viewers. I, they're, they're NASCAR fans, Skip. Those engines are five. They're 850 mm-hmm. horsepower. Yeah. And sometimes they can go all, all out for 500 miles in a Daytona 500, and they make it across the finish line. Mm. Sometimes they run out of fuel with one lap to go. Mm. Well, wait a second. Latired ran out of fuel. Oh, wait, a oh, wait a second. Wait a second. He, he ran out of fuel that. at the end of uh, the first quarter and at the end yeah. of the second quarter. So we all agree on one premise here. What? The Cavs go as LeBron goes. Of course. He of course. sets right. the tone. He ignites. He inspires from jump. Yeah. So if in the first quarter he is playing hellacious hard defense, everybody starts getting up into their man yeah. and playing defense. They they follow the leader. And if the leader starts attacking from the start on offense, everybody starts feeling good about their wide open three-point shots and they start to fall. Last night from the start, he was lethargic. He was lackadaisical. And then finally in the third quarter where it's still hanging in, in the game, he, he he goes, he spins in the lane and shoots a left-handed make air shots. ball. He, he practices those left- shots. Okay, but you know what that is? That's just a signal to your teammates. I don't really care about this game tonight. I, I just, well, I'm, I'm not into it. Uh, I'm not this? into Can it. Can I do this? Can I signal a 40-point triple-double on in game six? Yeah. Can I signal that? You could. I'm going to throw and, the blink And you on. know what? Blink he on. should. <laughs> that should happen. It's going to happen. Okay. All right. I'm not disagreeing with you. It should, and he should rise up in Game 7 the way he rose up in Game 6 in 2012 with your Miami Heat. Remember that? He had melted down in the 2011 Finals, and he was on the hot seat. So they got an elimination game that they faced in this very building that he is about to play Game 7 in. Can't nobody nobody do it better than him in Game 7. Okay. All right. Because that's the Spurs about him in a Game 7. Yeah, after after Ray Allen shot their heart out. But, Jack, can you tell – can you tell – can you explain to Skip – Skip, that LeBron at six foot nine, two sixty, expends more energy than a six six, two hundred and five pound. Michael I disagree Jordan. with that. I just disagree with that. But, but, it's, it, but it's hard. It's hard because Michael got his shots in a variety of different ways. Most of it too latter in his career, post up, mid post. He didn't have to work as hard. He was. He, he, did, he didn't have to well, work as hard. Did Plus, he play defense? No, he played yes. defense. But again, individual defense is based around the team as well. Because if you got help. Now you can get up in your man a little bit more. But again, it. hard. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, Rodman. Rodman. It's, it's a total difference. Comparing the two is, is totally different. He was different. the spirit. And, I'm, he it, was and I still think Michael Jordan's the best, but it's, it's, t- it's totally two different comparisons. You can't compare the two. Okay, do you realize six times in the postseason Michael Jordan led in usage rate, meaning the ball was in his hands the most? LeBron's only done that one time. So don't tell me he's carrying the heaviest load. He wasn't. But, Skip, LeBron, how many times has LeBron led his team in points and assists, in points and rebounds, more than any other player. Skip, that's all I'm saying. The responsibility that he has, no other franchise player has ever had that because Bird had Mikael and Parrish. Magic had Worthy and, and uh, Kareem, Jamal Wilkes. Mm-hmm. Come on, Skip. Mm. 
You know this. Come on, King. That's what I'm saying. He coming. It's time. He coming. You, you better come. Maybe he set us up for an epic finale here. I, I don't know. I just told you. How about you, the drama? Uh -huh. I just told you he's going to have the most points in a game seven. 50. All right. A 50. You know what? I wouldn't be shocked by that. No mercy. The Rockets host the Warriors in game five tonight. Houston tied the series on Tuesday after coming back from a 12-point fourth quarter deficit. On the Warriors side, Andre Iguodala and Klay Thompson are both listed as questionable for tonight's game. But yesterday, Steve Kerr said Klay should be fine. We're joined once again by Jim Jackson. Jim, how much trouble are the Warriors in? Well, it depends on, on Clay, to mm -hmm. me, on his health. And not just him being on the court because of how Houston plays. he got to be healthy. Right. I mean, especially on the defensive end. And that affects his offense. You saw when he came back in the game, he shot that shot short right at the free yep, throw line. He did. So, so it depends on his health. Um, I'm not worried about Golden State from this perspective is that, you know, just looking back at their postseason, they're 3-0 and coming off a, a loss. Okay, especially when Steph and, and Durant is in there, their ability to bounce back after a defeat. I don't think they'll go where it's you only know, have 14 assists and mm -hmm. 16 turnovers. Yeah. I mean, that's just not in their DNA. And not only making nine three pointers, but you got to give Houston credit for that. I mean, defensively, and we always question could the Rockets lock up? Right. And at the end of the game, give, and I'm going to give this to Jeff Bestelic, the assistant coach for, mm -hmm. for the Rockets, for changing the mindset. Uh, of the Rockets. I mean, Mike D'Antoni's best move was probably going to get him as a defensive coach mm -hmm. in situations like this mm -hmm. when you need somebody to step up. But I picked the, the Warriors in six. I'm going to stay with that pick, that they go into Houston and get this game and they win it um, at home. That's what I'm, you know, for me, it's just, I think that, I think the challenge for this Golden State team is can they lock in and stay engaged? And I think they can do that on the road. And you can see that in game two when they lost mm -hmm. That first game, and they yep. came back, and they were a totally, totally different team after losing. Mm. I think they're in some trouble mm -hmm. for the very reasons that you mentioned. We don't, they don't know if they're going to have uh, Iggy back, Andre Iguodala, uh, Clay Thompson, and he needs his leg. He's a jump shooter, and he's an on-ball defender. They mm -hmm. need somebody because if Iggy and Clay's out, who are they going to put on James Harden? So, but these guys, they believe, Skip, they took their best punch. They took Golden State's best punch at home in Oracle. And they survived it. Down tw down 12 with 10:45 uh, to go. Most but teams they took two punches. Really, yeah, they did. And survived it. And Tucker and Ariza mm -hmm. and Capella and CP3, they can defend Whew. and they can make up for a lot of James Harden because we know he ain't. But how about how about the two big steals he had though? How about I just say I told Skip early he need to put that on the loop because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he'll ever have two bigger plays in his life because those those were some big time plays. Uh -huh. I just believe that. After the way they won game four, mm -hmm. they come in with confidence, but they know they got to get up to a fast start because yep. Golden State's coming. Go to, Golden State's coming. And, and, and the thing is, well, another thing about Golden State, Skip, they have these games now. They get real sloppy with the oh, ball. big time. You know, they try to make all these mm -hmm. fancy passes. Steph will throw it behind his back. And you remember in the championship, in the game seven, Skip, do he I? went behind do his it, back and out, out, out of bounds. Mm -hmm. Just do it in the third row. Yeah. So they do, like, get, what? they do get sloppy sometimes with the basketball and put themselves in harm's way. I like the Rockets tonight. All I know for sure about tonight is I think we are going to find out what Golden State is really made of. This Golden State. And I get you whether Clay can play, Iggy can play. Those are pretty big deals. But in the end, Kevin Durant, by his standards, had a bad game the other night. Mm -hmm. He had 27 and 12. But you know what happened in the fourth quarter? And he blew it at the end with the ball in his hand. And he knew he blew it. And he's had to sleep on that. Mm -hmm. And I know that Steph had the outburst in the third quarter that he is highly capable of having. And then he stunk up the fourth quarter. Should have been one for nine, but the last shot didn't count. So one for nine? Really? An 0 for six from three? That's not two-time MVP caliber playoff <laughs> level performance. Mm -hmm. So I think you can check this team's oil tonight. And you, you point out, they bounce back. Do they bounce back? Because... They got bullied in the fourth quarter. Mm. They got footballed. Yeah. They got physically whipped on offense. That They got pushed completely out of their sets on offense, which is why Steve Kerr, I think, just said, I'm not going to call time. Kevin's got the ball in his hand. Yeah. If we call time, they're going to get to set. Yep. You know, they're going to get to set up their half-court defense, and they've just been pushing us out of everything we try to run. And he was just hoping somebody could create something helter-skelter on the fly. And the Rockets got back and camped 
and said, nope, you can't come in here, Kevin. And he should have pulled up and shot it from 18 or 20 feet. Mm -hmm. But he's trying to be a, a warrior. We pass the ball. We share the ball. And he sees Clay break. And it's just, it was a bad idea. And it was a bad game for, for all the, the Warriors. And yet Houston, and now I said this about Cleveland, Houston is leading this series 2-2 two to two because they are in command of this series. They got all the momentum. They got all the defensive momentum, and they're going back home. My issue that I told you earlier in the show is that every time I've expected the Rockets to do something, they have <laughs> failed to do something because mm -hmm. I thought they'd make a statement in game one, and the Warriors made a statement at Houston, and one going away, and Kevin Durant had 37. And then in game two, I thought Houston was finished, man. I thought they were going to get swept. Well and they won 127 to 105. And then we go back to Roracle, and I think, okay, now Houston's back. They got their legs underneath them. They got their psyche back. Mm -hmm. And I think they'll, they'll play them a tight game. They lost by 41 points. Really? And then get them out of my sight. I'm done with them, and they did that. They came from 12 down with 1045 left at Roracle mm -hmm. against that team. That's, that, that's the wildest finish I, I've ever seen in an NBA game. Right. Like the most improbable, unpredictable, impossible finish. For, for them to come back, you, you, how much would you have bet if I'd called you at that moment and said, uh, they're up 12. You got Houston? No, you don't got Houston, right. right? Okay, so now all the pressure and expectation to me goes back to the home team. Now I expect the Rockets to play well, which is why I'm going to stick with Golden State because it mm -hmm. seems like the Rockets can't live up to those kind of expectations. Well, it's two kind of pressures, though, because you got to think about it. It's a pressure on Golden State. As a championship team, everybody, everybody expects them to be back in the championship. They, they're supposed to be back in right. and win it, especially with the East being a little bit weaker. So that's that pressure. But there's also kind of this pressure we're seeing, too, because of Chris Paul and James Harden. Okay, can they finally break through? It's not yeah. the same amount nationally, but it's still there internally. Yep. They feel it. Right. Okay, a game like this is a statement game for those it two could players be. in particular that have to play well. Hey, if they win this game, and then all they need is one all of the last two. All they need is two. one. Yeah, but, okay. uh, but, it, but championship teams figure out ways to go through it. And again, I'm intrigued by it because I want to see Golden State be pushed. I want to see how they yeah. lock in when they have to win a game, which is great for me, which is great for basketball. Um, so we're going to see tonight at the beginning, and what I'm particularly going to look at is defensively for Golden State. At the beginning of the game, how engaged and how aggressive are they and how pissed off are they mm -hmm. that they lost at home against this Houston Rockets team? Well, he was basically talking well, a lot of ish yeah. in front of him. Well, you know? well, well, the officials are going to determine that because they let them play in game four. Did they? Now, if you're going to let them play rugby, let him, let Houston, him play, right? Houston got those kind of guys that can play that brand of basketball. How, how many times did Steph drive in the fourth quarter where I said, that's a foul? They yeah. just knock him on yeah. his butt. Yeah. Nope. Uh, and they uh, let him play. Uh, and, nope. and so if, you, if they let him play, yep. and Mike D'Antoni just said, look, guys, we're more likely to win a a 94-92 ball game yep. or 98-94 ball game as opposed to 132-127. Yep. So you try to mm -hmm. don't try to get into a scoring contest with them. Try to lock them down early. Now, you know Golden State's going to come out with a – they're going to come out amped up because they want to send a message early on. Got to weather the storm because they're coming. Golden State's coming. They're coming. But old Beard. Beard's got this? You really trust the beard? Beard ain't gonna go two for thirteen. You, you should game. fear the beard. Tonight. Beard got it. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna start cooking. <laughs> Listen, you know, I got something for you, man. What you, what you got? Oh, we got props. Oh. You got something for your boy Wallet with Wallet. Oh. That's the bet I lost. Yeah. I had to pay up on my bet. Yeah. I had to pay up my bet. That's what I do. What was the bet? I don't remember. We, we had to bet on the Houston game in Golden State oh. the other day here. So I, I had to bring in. <sighs> Some hen dog. Wait, why don't you pour, pour even though, oh, even wait, wait, even hey, though, pour even a little, even, have a sip, yeah, pour a little bit right. You don't want me on air with you. <laughs> you don't want me on air, you joy. Once you on air, I, I get you on air every day. That I way. be enjoying it, chair. <laughs> you can't handle it. Over I, I be on air. I figure I'm gonna get it back. You know what I mean? No, you're so not. You'll keep it yeah, closed. You, 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 you got gonna get it back. back. Yeah. It's I gonna, gonna, okay, it's gonna okay. be in the same condition with that. Yeah. Uh, That's what I'm saying. That's why I know I'm gonna get. So I basically bought it for myself. Your brother will be joining me tomorrow. Oh. Yeah, yeah, because he goes. Oh, is another one? Yeah. yeah. How much that cost you? Four dollars or? No, this came with a discount. Yeah, it's got a discount. <laughs> it came I got a, a discount. You know, I like discount. You do. <laughs> I like <laughs> discount. Cheapo. <laughs> <laughs> if it's free for me, give me free. Yeah, thanks for doing that. No mercy. 
Our next guest is a Grammy-nominated rapper that launched his career in 2015 with the smash hit Panda. His newest EP, LOD, is available now. Designer, welcome to Undisputed. Welcome. Hey, 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 hey. So good to have you. Heck yeah, heck yeah. You, you, you have yeah. arrived. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Tell us about your new album. Oh man, it's definitely, definitely, um, it's, 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 it's exciting. I can't wait for you, you know, for those who didn't hear it, I can't wait for y'all get a touch of it. It's designer, you know what I'm saying? I start off just the, you know, LOD with price tag. And price tag just gives you that energy, this rock, <laughs> yeah. So it is like you pull it as soon as that energy and it's make you do a mind spit. I go from different realms. I show different sides of me and um sides. And it's just like just showing my growth throughout my time of me is growing, you know. A lot of people know me from Panda, Timmy Turner. Um, I just came back from a tour, Steve Aoki, BTS. Shout out to all the K-pop fans. And just like, you know, just like doing a lot of things, you feel me? And now it's just here for this project and I'm ready to, you know, deliver and it's more. The album's coming soon and it's gonna be crazy on top of it. So, so yeah. give us a quick thought on how you got here because you grew up in the Bed-Stuy section of Brooklyn. Thank you. You got shot when you were 14. Yes, yes. So yes. take us from that moment to this moment. How did this happen? Oh man, I'll take you right there, man. It's, I, I, I cut it a little, just a little short for you, man. So it's that <laughs> word, again, because it's crazy. You, word, you, you was crazy. on my cliff, no yeah, words. Yeah. Yeah. Word, word, I'm gonna get you right. It's, um, man, I definitely had just like a, a, a dream. I was a kid, a uh, best star boy by the name of Sydney. My real name is Sydney. Um, Sydney Royale Sober the third. I'm the third of my fathers. And it's just like, best star Brooklyn boy with a dream. I, I always been, you know, around or right people, you know, wrong people or certain ways that I had to learn my experiences mm -hmm. through life. You know, I had to take the hard routes and learn and just pick and choose where I wanted to go. I always in, I always see myself in a, 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 a exotic place, you know, being from Best Stop Brooklyn, looking in the backyard. I didn't have a front window. I was sleeping on the floor on carpets. I remember nights when I used to just go in the corner, it was a cabinet, a little hole in it, and I used to kill all the roaches, man. It's <laughs> <laughs> get crazy, get crazy, and just like, and just let my, you know, let it out, man, you know, just not wanting to be home and not just being at my homeboy's crib, because my homeboys had a fly crib, and just being through things like that, you know, this really made me want to be like, yo, I want to be better, man. I want to have better. I want my moms to know that we could do this. We not just, you didn't just make me to just live like this, you know, I wanted to do better. So always looking to the stars in the backyard of my crib and just praying for the better, you know, just praying for the better. I had two ACs. Blasting in the crib, <laughs> word, word, you know what I'm saying? Where it used to get hot, just blasting and just like, just praying for the better, man. I used to go home, and my dream of just like being in a musician, I went from going to choirs, I sung to the girls, happy birthday, went mm -hmm. to the cribs, you know, doing to my girl, if you know me from 305, <laughs> PS 305, my elementary school, just like, just singing to, sing to everybody. Like, I remember times when I was in the cafeteria, and they used to be like, yo, all right, all right, we got a show today. Uh uh, designer coming out. Well, they didn't say designer, they say Sydney coming out, and Sydney would come out, and I'd just be like, yo, man, this singing, man, and just having a great time, and that's how I always seen it. So when I got to high school, I just always knew, all right, this is where I really wanted, wanted to go. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna just hit everybody in high school that's, you know, that make music. Right. This is the biggest fan base I could start. Like, I gotta know high school, you know what I'm saying? If you're famous in high school, you're famous everywhere. So I just thought there and I just went try to get everybody in high school. I wound up meeting one of my homeboys by the name of Lat Mikado. And my man Lat Mikado was an artist that was in the, like, around the corner from my projects on Clifton Place. But also, he was in my high school, and I met him through that. We just came through, yo, I had a verse. Me and him kicked the verse. He like, yo, you fire, you fire, man. Mm -hmm. So I had wound up meeting another one of his homeboys. And when I met his other homeboy, he had introduced me to somebody else that I did a record, and it wound up going on the radio by the name of On The Low. Brought it, me and Fresh had did a record. When they did that record, I just went around. I'm like, all right, I didn't have the Here money. You are. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, word. So, Sports has always been a passion for you. Yeah. You're a Cavaliers LeBron fan. Okay. How much trouble are they in? Oh, man, son. You dig I'm saying? Word, man. It's the three to two, man. It's the three mm -hmm. to two right now. You know yep. what time it is? It's really like... You giving up on them? Nah, man. I ain't giving up on them, man. You know, Bron, man. Bron got this. Bron, Bron, Bron got to put in pain in, but you know what I'm saying? He tired, man. He tired. It's just like being on tour, man. It's like... Yeah, he like tired of being on, on tour. Like, yeah, you dig Yeah, you dropping them five lyrics two nights, yeah. uh, two hours a night, five nights a week. He's 21 years old. So, he doesn't get tired. <laughs> 
tired. But you, you want to roll sleep. through the day of the year. You get yeah. tired, don't you, design? What, man? So you did. I got, I got to go in. I got to put it in sometime, man. Nah. But, but, but. You know, LeBron gonna get it right though. I just yeah. think that, yeah. He gonna he, he he got the chance. He was looking crazy last night on the grand, man. <laughs> yeah, he was looking crazy, but that's okay. Pretty crazy to me. Yeah, well, that's that's right. what I saw. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> yeah. So you're also a Golden State fan, right? Of course, man. Of course, heck yeah. So heck you're, yeah. you're like Shannon, you front run with all those. No, no, you can't listen. You either ride with Braun or you got to get off my track. You can't be. No, 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 no. Look, look, this is what I got to say. This is what I got to say. Look, LeBron squad right now might not take him to the. Completing the finals, mm. you know what I'm saying? Doesn't have enough help. He doesn't have enough help. Mm. Yeah, he said it. That's what he said. I didn't say that, Skip. Yeah. He said it. Go ahead, keep it going. You do it good. So, how much trouble are the Warriors in tonight at Houston in Game Five? Two Man, two? Word. I, I ain't gonna lie. I, it probably was shocking. You know what I'm saying? You know, Clay Thompson. You know what I'm saying? He got throbbing in the knee. He does. He's out. You know, Eagle. You know, Eagle Dallas. He's out. Um, but you feel me? Like you know. They just gonna push. I just think they just gotta push hard. You dig what I'm saying? They just gotta push hard. Like, Beard. yeah, you feel me? Like James Harden, he's not playing. He's been like trap. He's like he's training. He's doing his things. He's getting his shots right. And you feel me? Like they just gotta push hard. Steph Curry going. He just it's like it's, it's like a lunch break for my boy though. He gonna take it though, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So you're still gung ho. Golden State. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say go. I'm gonna say Golden State. Yo, man. you ain't feeling Golden. He ain't feeling Golden State too. I, I get the pressure. You ain't feeling Golden State yeah, like you supposed to be feeling, but that's yeah. your squad. Nah, nah, nah. I'm feeling Golden State. I'm feeling Golden State. You dig what I'm saying? Why you, why you saying I'm not feeling Golden? You cause I mean you like I don't know James Harden. He's training. He getting the yeah. shot. Right? I said it's got to go hard. Yeah, but, it's CP3. I'm, no, no, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just speak reality a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, he is a pain putter. I ain't gonna lie. Like James don't put in pain now. My team though, KD. Yeah. You got a couple. Long, you got the you got the tarantula. You know what I'm saying? Long arms. Oh, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Words. So he's ready to put it in. Yeah. So that's how it's gonna go. How I'm thinking. You know what I'm saying? So you are signed to Kanye's label. Yes, yes, yes. Kanye yes. has openly supported President Trump, which has been controversial to say the least. Oh man. Your thoughts on all of that? Shoot, man, son. You know, um, my boy. You know what I'm saying? He, um, I just, I just be like, you know. Kanye is very influential. That's all I can say. You know, he's a very influential man. And what you can say, you know, can change a lot of things. You mm -hmm. feel me? Um, I just, you know, just say, you know, I hope he picks the right positive decisions. I'm not, a, I don't, I can't choose what he posts or anything, you know. I'm just his artist and it's like, I'm just accepting it just like how y'all guys, you know what I'm saying? I'm really on some like, hope he, we just pray for him, you know, and just picking the right positive choices. Thank you. The problem is I got no problem with him supporting President Trump. Mm -hmm. I got a problem when he says slavery was a choice. Yeah. Mm. And as you said, he's very influential. Yeah. And you and I both know there was only one people that had a choice in slavery, and that was the slave owners. Mm -hmm. The people that were being imported to do the work, they had no choice in this matter. Yeah, they, they didn't choose to come from that land. Right, they they didn't choose to have their families broken up. And for him to utter something that was so ignorant and so disgraceful, mm -hmm. I, I'm ashamed. Yeah. <sighs> I feel, I, feel, I, feel, I feel that you can feel that energy, you know what I'm saying? And Did you talk, have you talked to him? Did you I, say, Kanye, bro, come on now. Well, I, I put word out like, yo, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, just chill and just, you know, like, you know, like, just like, you, like, you feel me? But it's, it's crazy. It's crazy that he even said that. Everybody's shocked, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm shocked, you feel me? And I feel like, you know, you just got to reword or what, whatever he was trying to say. I know he was trying to kind of with a... a a positive, a trying to be right a little. You know what I'm saying? You can't say anything. There's nothing positive ever going to come out of yeah. mentioning slavery and Holocaust. Well, There's nothing positive. Well, so don't try to equate those two. But here's the thing. Look, he's Kanye West. If you want your album, you're going to drop your album in a month or two, okay, I get yeah, it. You know? But don't be, don't, don't come out here and piggyback and talk about slavery was a choice to get people talking about you to hear what Kanye say because they saying, did you hear what Kanye say? He sound like a damn fool. That's what they saying. <laughs> She's crazy. So Shannon, can you respect Kanye West's right to support President Trump? Oh yeah, that, no, I got no problem with that. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's his right. I mean, it, hey, and, and a lot of people can skip. My grandpa used to say, "Boy, if you ever get some money, you vote for the candidate that's gonna best suit your back pocket." But you and that, but you know, you were poor mm -hmm. back then. Yep. Back, the Democrats were the one that supported the poor, the minorities and the blacks. Okay, I get it. But I can't, I can't, I can't support President Trump mm -hmm. with his rhetoric and his divisiveness, I got it. and he attacks everybody. I mean, he's almost like a petulant child. I mean, like you're the president, you need to be able to rise above, and we know that we should hold our president to a higher standard. Not say, well, he's a human like everybody else. I know, 
Yeah. You're human, but you have to rise above the fray and not come at everybody when they disagree with you. You mm -hmm. can't call people yeah, you can't offend. Yeah, you can't offend nobody. You know what I'm saying? You can't offend anybody. You right. got people that's supporting. You yeah. know what I'm saying? All right, well, we got Golden State tonight. Got this. Yo, man, you know what time it is. Yeah, LeBron, designer, thanks for joining us. No mercy. Ezekiel Elliott was ranked 54th on NFL Network's top 100 list, which was voted on by other players. Zeke was ranked 7th last year, but his numbers were down in 2017 after his six-game suspension. But the ranking did not seem to bother Zeke yesterday. Let's take a listen. It is what it is. I missed six games, so, you know, I think I know the player I am. You guys know the player I am. Everyone in the league knows the player I am. So, I mean, I don't really need verification from a top 100 list. Shannon, do you like Zeke's response? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think mm. I look up that uh, definition of verification. Mm. I think I can verify him as Zeke. I think he meant validation. I think that's what he meant, Joy. So <laughs> I'm gonna take him I, at that. I, I like verification. Yeah, uh, he's Zeke. Yeah. You know, I follow him. On, yeah, he on he on social media. He's Zeke. I verified it. You follow him? No, I don't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Skip. And, and and he mentioned some of it in his answer. I missed six games. My team wasn't very good. I believe that when they have take the ranking next year. Zeke will be very, very high because, Skip, uh, his rookie year, he had 322 total carries. He missed game, six, uh, game 16, yep. so that averaged the 21 a carry. He played last year, and he had averaged 24 carries a game. So I think that's going to be more in line with what we see considering they lose their top two receiver than Dez and uh, Jason Witten. So I expect Zeke to end up with somewhere between 350 and 400 carries, and I also expect him to be – probably a couple of hundred yards over where mm -hmm. he was his rookie year. He has to – look, I get it. You say all those things, Skip, but we all want validation. That's why guys get so upset when they don't make the Pro Bowl. Mm -hmm. That's why guys get so upset when they don't make the All-Star game. Yep. Because you want, that you want that validation from those guys because those are the guys you respect mm -hmm. the most because those are the guys that you play against. Mm. But I love, his, I love his mindset. I love that he, he seemed – I mean – I mean, he don't seem like he seemed like last year when he came back, Skip, because, you know, he was chiseled a little bit. I, I'm saying. Oh, so you think he fell out of shape? No, I'm just saying uh, he don't look like he, he don't look like uh, you know, we came. He looked a little rounder. Yeah, yeah, saying? yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But it's, it's early. It's early. Yeah. Definitely. Maybe you should go back to Cabo for a month. Might need to come on see old Shea, you know, Shea. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, I see. Interesting. Yeah, 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 you need to come over and see old Shea Sharp. Cowboy hater Shea. Nah! Yeah. Yeah. You call yourself a spin doctor? Uh, yeah. yeah. That's what they call me. That's what they call me around the town. Old spin doctor. You're a spin doctor on this show. I know that. <laughs> yeah, the ultimate. So, year after year, this top 100 list just baffles me. I just can't figure it out. And how Ezekiel Elliott plummeted from 7th overall a year ago to 54th last year. You know, it's two years to one year. It just boggles my mind. I don't get it because I know he only played 10 games last year, so maybe it's kind of out of sight, out of mind, and I know that team finished only 9-7, and seven, which under the circumstances wasn't all that bad, but I keep looking at the production that he gave the Dallas Cowboys in the 10 games. It's pretty great, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's he averaged 98 yards a game. And that includes the debacle at Denver, the, the most nightmarish game I think I've ever watched the Cowboys play. Mm -hmm. You remember that I do. monstrosity? Yeah, I got me a couple of cases. What was it, 42, 42 to 17. 17? A whole lot to a few. In that game, Ezekiel Elliott managed to carry the ball nine times for a grand total of eight yards. Mm -hmm. And he wound up with his hands on his hips. Remember watching, who was it, Chris Harris Jr. Yeah. run the other way with the interception mm -hmm. that went right through Des Bryant's hands. That was sort of the beginning of the end of last year's Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. And obviously he staved off his suspension all the way to near the end, and then he was gone for six games. But do you realize, Mr. Sharp, mm -hmm. that 98 yards rushing a game, even though it's only for 10 games, but still 10 games is pretty big sample size. Yeah. Do you realize that led the National Football League in yards per game? Mm -hmm. Todd Gurley was second with 87 yards per game after that monster year that he had. And then we go to Le'Veon at 86 yards a game, and little Kareem Hunt had 83 yards, and big Leonard Fournette had 80 yards a game. So 98 led it. And if I take out the, the eight-yard game at Denver, he averaged 108 yards a game. I, I think that's best running back in football kind of numbers. Well, you look at up. Skip, Zach Martin fell, too. He's at 71 now. Okay. So, and you what know. What was he like? 
He was tenth a, or something? No, he was like in the twenty. He was like okay. way because they, they had, had three the three lines. in the top right. twenty-five. And that's the thing, though, Skip, is that when your team is not as good as they were the previous year, uh, Zeke missed those games. The running game was not the same. So you know you're going to take a hit. But Zeke, don't worry about that. At the end of the day, if you got the trophy. Unfortunately, you guys won't be holding that trophy. <laughs> but the goal is to get the trophy, mm. not to get, you know, guys rank you 15th or 20th. Mm -hmm. I wonder where they had old Shay at. Mm. I don't even know. Probably cracked the top 10 a couple times. You might have been 101 on that list. What? Somewhere in there. Somewhere like <laughs> 101? that. 101? You were just kind of out of sight, out of mind. You caught one ball a game. I no, don't know. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about early. I'm talking about the oh, mid 90s. Oh. When the old Bronco were rolling. Mm. You, know, you know, we 13 and 3, 14 and 2, 12 and 4. I don't really care about the good old days because I care about the good new days that'll be next it, year for the Dallas Cowboys. You should applaud the good old days with mm -hmm. the Cowboys because mm -hmm. that's the last time y'all won something. new days are coming next mm -mm. year. Mm -mm. And maybe Ezekiel doesn't need verification, <laughs> but he needs motivation. And I think this will relight that fire. I think he's going to come back with a vengeance the way Tom Brady came back from his suspension. Oh. Remember, Brady had to do it. got to be about Tom Brady. We ain't well, talking about Tom Brady. It, it reminds me it's going to sort of that smack of Tom Brady coming back I'm with ready a vengeance. To see this, I'm ready to see this Dak-friendly offense. Yeah, well, Where is Dak ranked? Well, it could be a Zeke-friendly offense. In the end, that's oh, what you think. It's going to be Zeke-friendly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So? I got Zeke will lead the league in Russia. I think he will. He already did it once as a rookie. Yeah, right? Where'd that get y'all? Well, that got us 13 and 3. Got your booty in the first Got game. us first a game. Mason crossbar. No, 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 no. no. Huh? Well, how many times, how many people got Vinatieri? A Seven. bunch. Yeah. Yeah, save Except, save. But he kicked him right down the middle. Save Tom Brady's career. Save Tom Brady's legacy. Have you ever seen two worse-looking field goals? Good. They look good to me for while I was sitting in my room. I know. Yeah. You had a big old screen, two the, folded. The one, the, one the, the, the game winner that he duck-hooked to the left and suddenly it just straightened back out and made it just inside the left upright? He, How do you do that? He did it all along. He knew there was going to be a slight breeze. It was like a trick kick? Nope. Like, he, like, started slight outside. Slight breeze. It no, was because inside. Started, because he knew, like, Skiff was going to start jumping and we see this mm. ball outside oh. the cross bar. And then with it, oop. And yeah. he's like, oh, Hazel. Hazel. You started screaming, didn't you? Yeah, I think she wasn't with us. No, she was barely yeah. with us. She was still she was there. She was a baby. She was there. Mm, she didn't know what was happening. Oh, I knew what was yet. happening. She just wondered why Dad was screaming. But Skip, it happens. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen again, too. Yeah. Well, I just think he's going to have a monster year. He will lead the league in rushing. He will make you eat your words that Le'Veon Bell is the best running back because this young man is the best running well, he back. Number three. You know it. and He's number three. Number Todd Gurley. Three. Oh, Todd Gurley. I forget about our man, Todd Gurley. Yeah. Uh, the driving force, you told me, of the Dallas Cowboy offense is this. Yep. Right? Yep. Yep. Now, this, uh, hold on, Skip. I mean, this, I mean, this thing, we have to, you know, I have to update the resumes mm -hmm. now. You don't get to stay number one yep. if you don't perform like number one. So mm -hmm. I'll update it again. Well. But right now, coming into the season. I predict that a whole lot of NFL Mondays, I'm going to be sitting here doing this. You think so? Yep. Just nah, like this. I feel comfortable right now where yeah. I sit saying, no, yeah. that's not going to happen. And you have lost yet another case of Diet Mountain Dew because you what? got me seven and nine for the yeah. Dallas Cowboys? Yeah. Really? With, and, with and, I got, and I get one y'all ain't making the play. I got, I got a couple of cases y'all ain't making the playoffs. Oh, okay, good. I got that. Mm -hmm. Good. So what? The, hold on. What, what are the Eagles going to be doing while y'all doing all this? When you doing all this, what are the Eagles going to be doing? They'll be pretty good. They'll be a wild card team. Huh? <laughs> wild, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Wild card? Yeah. Yeah. You don't think... Carson Wentz listen to the show. He's not going to be the oh, quarterback. Oh, quarterback. Oh, quarterback. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. Join us again same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one. one.